Okay, so here it is, folks. Uh, Frank Paris here with my new remote controlled lawnmower. Manufacturer of this lawnmower is Husqvarna. Hope I'm saying that correct. It is a 163cc Briggs and Stratton motor. This is a push mower. I've taken the big wheels off the back and replaced them with M41 wheelchair motors and 10 and a half inch wheelchair wheels. Uh, tires, they're not new. <laughs> uh, sometimes I buy new, but this time I just got the motors and I got the tires with them, so I decided to use the same tires. The M41 motors are inline motors, and that means that they are the motor and the gear are in line with the back of the motor. So that's what they mean by inline motor. Um, there's two. I'm using two 12 volt, 12 amp batteries, which are wired for 24 volts. That'll give you a good 80 by 100 cutting area before you have to swap them out for a couple of other charged ones. So I'd suggest you buy, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I suggest you buy two sets on eBay you can buy two sets of these 12 12s for $49 and that includes the shipping okay moving on down I'm using a this is a little dirty because I just finished cutting the lawn um, I am using a, uh, a Walmart uh, tackle box type of box I found it in the fishing department that's a lot cheaper than using the uh, the ones that uh, I used to use for my mowers. Uh, this was only like, I don't know, $70. Okay. And what I've done is I've drilled a big hole here in the back for the motors, uh, motor wiring uh, to come through. Uh, I have a Radio Shack switch here, an on-off switch which is fused to the motor control board, which I'll get in a second. Uh, and I've drilled a hole so that the switch is on the outside. And you can see that here. The switch is on the outside. I use a clear box because it's easy to see if anything is awry. And it's easy to do uh, whatever drilling or cutting you have to do in order to get the electronics and the... Uh, the um, of the fuse uh, fuse uh, holder into the box and um, that's about it with that uh, there is a dimension engineering motor control board this is a 2060 uh, heavy duty I'm using gauge 8 gauge wire so that the wires don't get hot and melt away and again I fuse the uh, I fuse the uh, unit to protect the motor control board because these guys are around $250, $275 each, you want to break it. Uh, DimensionEngineering.com, you want a 2060. And again, the fuse is a Radio Shack inline fuse or auto store, wherever you want to go. Eight gauge wire by a roll of black and red. And of course, I'm using a standard Futaba receiver and a Futaba radio, which is not in the picture right now. So, now the, the interesting part of this is not what I just said. The interesting part is engineering the unit so that there is one bracket. Engineering the unit so that there's one bracket that supports everything. Okay, this L-shaped bracket from Radio Shack, uh, not Radio Shack, uh, L-shaped bracket from Ace Hardware. I have one on this side supported by two screws. One, two. Okay, and if you go on the other side, I've got the same L-shaped bracket coming around this side. Again, supported by two screws. Okay, well, those uh, L-shaped brackets wrap around inside, okay, to two L-shaped brackets coming up on both sides. Let me get over here so you can see that. Two L-shaped brackets coming up right here. Okay, one supports this aluminum housing for the batteries, and one supports the the uh, uh, box for the electronics. 
okay, the uh, electronics box, okay, and then um, also I'm supporting the, uh, the L-shaped bracket also supports these two right angle L-shaped aluminum brackets that come from Ace Hardware, okay, and those support the motors, and the motors are in place with three straps from the plumbing department at Ace. You know, the stainless steel straps you use for, for uh, piping and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, I'm doing it that way so that if I ever have to change the motors, I can just pop them off and put them back on. And these steel straps uh, last a pretty long time. Uh, and you, uh, you buy those uh, at uh, Ace Hardware or Home Depot or Lowe's. So one L-shaped bracket this way. Two L-shaped brackets coming up. One supports the uh, battery housing. Uh, the other supports the uh, electronics housing. Okay, and uh, uh, in between the two of them, I can try to get down here and show you. I braced it under here with a piece of uh, metal also from Ace. Uh, cut it down, and it, that supports the uh, that supports the uh, the two brackets that are coming up, the L-shaped brackets. Everything, every single thing that I screw into the unit is double bolted with lock washers so that the vibration is not going to open up the uh, the unit. So all of your screws should be double bolted and uh, you should uh, make sure that you've done that so that the, uh, the vibration does not un undo any of your nuts and bolts while you're cutting your lawn. I've added one more thing. Uh, I've added a, an on-off switch, toggle switch, which is grounded uh, to the, uh, the uh, mower. Uh, actually, no, it's not. It's actually grounded to the switch. And when I flip the switch on and I hit the pull, the pull on the, on the mower, the mower will turn on. Okay? And when I flip the switch off, that will shut the mower down. And that's wired up to... Uh, the uh, doohickey handle cable mechanism that you would normally use to uh, to uh, start and stop your mower if you were mowing with uh, the mower handle. Okay, and that's basically all there is to the mower. Uh, that's it. That's done. That's the way it works. And I don't know if there's anything else I can tell you about it. Other than the Husqvarna 160, uh, six, 160 uh, cc motor uh, mower, push mower, is uh, about $250 at Lowe's. And that's it. There's the mower, and it works so cool. Look at part two, and you'll see me cutting my lawn. Thank you.